We're going to walk through how to import data into Microsoft Excel. So for example, we might have something from the World Wide Web, a URL, or we might have a local data file, a text file, for example. We want to be able to import that into Excel and be able to plot the, uh, be able to plot it and be able to see our data visually. Okay, the file that we're going to go with uh, to be able to import is listed right here below. I'll also put this uh, link in the description. And if you just open this up, you'll see time, uh, heater 1 and heater 2, and temperature 1 and temperature 2. And you can see that the values are separated with commas, so that's important for our data import. So the very first thing that we can do uh, with this is just go ahead and just select Control A and then Control C to copy it. And then right click on your uh, folder or on your desktop and go to New and then select Text Document. And I'm just going to call this Data and then open it up. You might open up with um, you know, Notepad or with, uh, like in this case, Notepad++ and then just paste it in there with a control V. And that pastes your file locally and there you can see that we have the same data that we had uh, shown in the internet browser. Okay, I'm going to close this one out and um, you know, let's go ahead and just be able to change. It's probably the easiest way to get this into Excel is just to change the file extension. You need to do that by going to Folder Options. If you can't see your file extension already, and then just unselect Hide Extension for Known File Types and click Apply. And then it'll show you the .txt. You can change that to a .csv. And then if you just open it, Excel understands CSV file. So there's your data right there. But let's just say we kept it in uh, txt format and we want to import that instead in a different uh, with a different way so just come to Excel uh, create a blank workbook move this out of the way a little bit and then come to data so data we can get external data from the web so you could import it directly from that URL that we had you can get it from a text file so we're going to show that one first just go to my desktop, select the data file, and I'll select import. And this import, this text import wizard shows up. I can either do fixed width or I can do delimited. Okay, I'll select delimited because uh, it's comma delimited. And unselect tab and just select the comma. You'll see that it divides it out into the different columns. And it says, where do you want to put it? You can either put in a new worksheet or in the existing worksheet, starting at A1. Okay, and there's my data. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close this, not save it. And let's say we just had this URL right here, and we want to be able to import it from this URL without creating that text file. Just import it directly from the web address. So just come to Excel. We'll go to Data, External Data from the Web. And then the MSN page shows up. You can import anything, you know, any web page. In this case, it's just going to be a text file. And I'll go ahead and import that into the existing worksheet. And it's going to go ahead and get the data. And one of the things with this is it didn't separate it out. So if you ever get data like this that you're pasting in and it's just all in one row, you can come up here to Text to Columns, again, under the Data tab. And then you get your delimited uh, data with a comma, and you can click Finish. Okay, if it's resized poorly, you just go ahead and select all the cells, uh, all the rows and columns by selecting uh, right above A1, diagonally above it. And then you can go over to one of your columns until you see this uh, black double arrow, and double click, and it'll automatically resize it. Okay, so we got it from the web or from a local text file. And we showed how to use the text columns to be able to import that if it uh, didn't do the delimiters for you. Now what we'll do is go ahead and select a couple of these columns. I'm going to select, uh, let's see, just these first three right here. And then come to Home, and we'll go ahead and insert a plot. 
Okay, in this case, it's going to be a scatter plot. You can see uh, these different. Let's see, I need to do something else here. Instead of selecting those three like that, go ahead and select these three columns. Sometimes it tries to infer what kind of plot you want. Okay, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, uh, that one didn't work very well. So I'm going to hit um, control, I'm just going to hit uh, shift and then hit right a couple times and then hit uh, down if you go down like that and then if you hit control it'll go all the way down so control shift and then it'll go all the way down and then lift up on control and keep holding shift and hit up by one and then you're just selecting just that data okay let's try this again looks a little bit better okay and i'm going to go ahead and just select this one with the um, the scatter plots just with the lines here and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this and just put it at the very top okay if you hit control and then right and left you can navigate around and then let me go ahead and format this so I just want to plot the heaters first of all I'll remove the title uh, select the plot okay and you can do design or format here under chart tools if you add a chart element like a axis, horizontal, and a primary vertical, you can change, uh, for example, this one would be time in seconds. Okay, and this one is, it kind of makes you type sideways here. Well, you're typing normally, but it appears sideways. And then it just doesn't look very good. You see this in scientific notation. Um, so I'm going to select this, and you can go to text options or axis options. If you go to number, then you can select a different category. I'll make that a number with zero decimal places. And it changes it. Okay, so actually that's not temperature there. That's a heater value. We'll do temperature next. zero to 100 percent on the heater and then we have the time and I'll select this uh, X numbers down there okay and if you just come back here to number and then make it zero decimal places okay so that's going to show up a little bit better also I don't like how it's going down to negative 20 it's just going to be zero to 100 percent you can select this and on the bounds go 0 to 100. So instead of the auto, uh, we're going to do it ourselves. You can also move the legend around. If it's kind of getting in your way, you want to maybe put it up there, for example, move things around. So you can kind of drag and click, you know, move things around where you want them. Okay, so the other thing we need to think about is how this is going to look in black and white, and also for people who are colorblind. So sometimes I like to select... Uh, this and then you can you know this one uh, you can change some of the uh, properties of this okay of this data series and you just come over here and you can select some of the things like the line or the marker and I'm gonna change this one to a dashed line so a lot of options there it's kind of you know menu driven also it only goes up to really 600 there I'll go ahead and resize this one so it's 600. Okay now uh, we want to be able to also get the temperature as well. We have the heater values and we want to be able to get the temperatures. Okay so you can select this. Okay select all the temperature values, scroll down or you can hit the, uh, the con you know the control will take you all the way down. If you hit shift it'll remember those. Okay so it'll select those for you. So just practice that with the shortcut keys. Uh, hit control shift and then down lift up the control and raise uh, pit up okay so you've just selected that time column and then if I come over here and hit control okay I didn't do that right let me try that again and then I'll hit control and then I'll hold shift and then while holding control and shift I'll hit down okay so I've selected just those uh, three areas right there okay um, and then I'll go ahead and generate a new plot. I'll insert a new plot here. 
uh, similar to the last one. Ooh, didn't like that one as well. Okay, so let me just go ahead and try something else here. I'm just going to select these three columns, hold the control key, and then you can select multiple columns, and then you can insert. Uh, so for example, um, this is a uh, scatter plot, but it looks like it only goes up to 200, but my time goes up to 600. So I need to come down to the very bottom. It looks like it's doing something with that very last uh, row, so I'm just going to select that to go up by one, and I think that should fix it. Okay, so now it goes to 600. Now I want to go ahead and apply that same formatting that I had from this one. One of the nice things you can do is use the paintbrush, the Format Painter. Okay, so I'm going to select that and then select my plot. Okay, that didn't work too well. Let me see if I can do the Format Painter again. Try this out. Okay, that didn't work too well. Let me see if I can do it one more time. Format Painter, I think I might have to select the right part of the plot. This was working for me before. It didn't work so well this time. Okay, I guess I need to go through and just do that uh, myself. Okay, we will go ahead and just do Axis Options, Number. Okay, I want to make this look uh, good, uh, just like the other one. I just go through this quickly. Okay, and then remove the title, for example. And then, okay, again, we're under design. We'll add the chart element and add some X and Y labels. Okay, and that will be time in seconds. And this one will be temperature. Celsius okay and then you can move things around just so it takes up you know you don't want to put necessarily the legend down there take up that valuable real estate so you can drag it down have a little bit better plot you know also come here to axis options and go to you know, maybe 0 to 600 again okay be able to align the times between the two so you can see here that we have the heater I was at 70% and the temperature device increased in temperature. And then you can see the temperature, the heater went down. Okay, and then you can see it kind of leveled off here. Uh, you know, 40% led to a temperature steady about 47, 46 degrees. Here you can see the temperature uh, uh, two increase as the heater two increases. Okay, and there you can see the heater values that change over time, and you can see the temperature values as they increase or decrease. Okay, so here are some plots, just they've been horizontally aligned, so we can see the relationship between the heaters and the temperatures. We're going to do some more with this, um, with this temperature control device. You can get a little bit more information here. It's also going to be the subject of a future class that you're going to be working with. Okay, but we're going to be able to adjust the heater value and make the temperature follow a certain set point. We're going to do some data analysis with that in this class, some basic modeling and uh, statistics and, and other th activities with this uh, temperature control device. Okay, so there you can see the kind of in fast forward, but you see the relationship between the heater and the temperature. Okay, so I'll post a link to this data set so that you can also use the same one and practice how to import data into Excel and be able to plot it.